Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be about me installing my ARB air compressor, this one. And this one is the single cylinder. They do offer a dual cylinder compressor that's supposed to be better for airing up large tires, but I don't think it's going to be an issue for me. It's never bugged me to fill up my tires kind of slowly because normally after a ride, you're stretching your legs, you're talking to people, so I'm, I'm not in a big rush. This should do fine. And I chose this one mainly because of how compact it is. It'll fit right where I want it to in the engine bay. I've never installed an air compressor on a vehicle before, especially not for lockers, but I think I can figure it out. And if you see the video, then I guess I did. So now that I'm nearing the end of the build on the Jeep, it's time to actually get this air compressor installed for two reasons. The first reason is to operate both my front and rear ARB air lockers. That's gonna be pretty helpful out on the trails. And then the second reason, it gives me onboard air to air my tires back up after I aired them down for a trail. So if you take a look at my engine bay, you'll see that the battery is over here. And then on this side, you have a similar tray that is empty with nothing there. And this is where I plan on putting my air compressor. When I did the fender swap, I left this tray off because it needed refinished. It was very rusty. So I cleaned it up and got some paint on there and I'm going to be setting it right back in there. And that's where I will mount the air compressor. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but there is a lot of adjustability. So you can kind of orient this in different ways to fit in tighter areas or whichever direction you need it to fit. First, you can loosen these two screws and that allows you to move the main unit up and down like this. Next, you can loosen this bolt right here, and that allows you to spin the cylinder, which is helpful because right here are where the solenoids go that will actuate your lockers. So your switch ties into the solenoids, and at the flip of the switch, it'll engage for either front or rear locker. It also comes with this base plate it mounts to, and if you look at the feet on the bottom of the unit, you can see that you have plenty of room to kind of slide it side to side like that. And then also, these silver screws on the end of the mount will allow you to take it off of that base for your initial mounting. If any of that seems a little complicated or confusing right now, don't worry about it. When I get to the actual mounting portion of this, I'll show it to you and make it a little more clear. So obviously first, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it fits where you want it and then kind of figure out the orientation you're gonna place it in. So I've set my tray back in here now where it should be. And now I'm gonna put the air compressor in there and kind of figure out how I want it to face. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of stuff my hand in there and just lightly mark where the legs are on each side. And then I can pull that plate back out and then I can get to mounting the bracket and the compressor to it. So I'm gonna drop this in real quick, guys. I think I mentioned it in other videos, but if you're newer here, you might not have heard it. I still very much plan on trying to do a Jeep trip this year, and I'm in Ohio, so I think I'm gonna try and go for Michigan this year. They have Holly Oaks and Drummond Island, which are both Jeep Badge of Honor trails, so I'm really looking forward to trying those out. So if you're not subscribed and you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the content. So this plate is more of a backing plate and I'm probably not gonna use it since what I'm mounting it to is already nice and thick, so I don't think it'll need it. And it gave you four of these little guys, so I'm gonna find a drill bit that is that diameter, and I'm gonna get prepped to drill my holes. So a quarter inch drill bit, perfect size. Okay, so I set the compressor on there and put the bolts through the holes. So now I'm gonna stick the washers and the nuts on the bottom and get that tightened up. And then hopefully I can fit the plate with the air compressor on it down in there. If not, I can take off the mounting bracket with these four bolts and then put that in there and then put the compressor back on. But I think this will work, which will probably be easiest as well. So I've got the mounting bolts nice and tight now and I'm retightening these set screws to hold it in this orientation. This part's all kind of gonna be trial and error for your own Jeep, where you're mounting it and how you're mounting it. So don't take this as gospel, just kind of figure out how it's gonna work for you. One other thing I bought with the air compressor was this ARB pump up kit. This is an accessory kit that they sell. 
gives you the hose and all the fittings you see in the picture. It gives you this quick connect and this adapter right here to fit the quick connect and fit the pressure switch. So this fitting and this quick connect will go right here where this plug is and then you can kind of pick the orientation you want the pressure switch and the quick connect to go onto this. This is the pressure switch that comes with the air compressor. So essentially you get these two fittings with the pump up kit, you get this with the compressor. So you would put this kind of splitter here and then you've got your quick connect that goes on top and then you got your pressure switch that will go right here. And I guess honestly these two are interchangeable depending on which way you face it so I'm not sure how I'm going to orient it yet but I think I might go ahead and mount it and make sure everything fits up before I stick it back in there. So for this fitting you could either use some Teflon tape or like pipe dope. Uh, normally I would probably use pipe dope but I don't have any so I'm just going to use Teflon tape and it should be good enough. I think I have this tight enough. I don't want to go too tight where I break anything or end up in a position where I can't turn it anymore and it's facing the wrong way. So I'll try it here and then I'll check for leaks after I install it. And if I have to, I'll go back and tighten it up more. So same thing with these fittings, a little Teflon tape and then tighten them up. I made that a time lapse, but I think I left the gap a little too long. I think that turned into about a one second time lapse. So sorry. But this is how mine's gonna work. Uh, again, these are kind of interchangeable and you can angle it any way you want to make it fit where you're trying to put it. And if you don't have the uh, pump up kit, then you won't have this or this fitting. The pressure switch will just go right into the base here. Well, it took me a minute to uh, contemplate my life choices, but as you can see, just not quite enough room here. So I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do. I might real quick try swapping the pressure switch and this quick connect and then kind of angling the quick connect a little more over here. That might work. It'll still be very tight up top for the uh, pressure switch. <sighs> and then this is the air filter. It screws in right here. So I think that'll still fit without touching the uh, fender. I don't think it'll interfere with it at all. You guys ever just think you're kind of smart and then you do something the hardest way possible for far too long to be acceptable and then you end up with this. This is obviously the best way to put it in there. Tons of clearance. You can get to everything. The only thing that's over here is the air filter which you can unscrew easily. So yeah I don't I don't know how much of what I've already done I'll show because that was just absolutely pathetic. Um, this gives you all the clearance you need and this should be pretty easy to mount. I am honestly disappointed in myself. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you guys are disappointed in me too. Okay, so I've got the new holes drilled and what I'm gonna do to make it easier this time is take this mounting plate off of the actual compressor and all that is is one, two, three, four bolts and I've already taken out two of them so I just have to take out the other two. So this is where I ended up mounting it. I have one hole that was already in the plate and then I drilled these other three and now I've only got two bolts I can use right now so I'm gonna go ahead and put those in and snug them down and tomorrow I'll pick up two more bolts and then I can put the other two in. One thing to note here too is that the bolts are gonna be sticking through the other side and where this mounts it has a lot of uh, surface area so there's only a small section that's hollow and I had to make sure I kept it within that section so the screw heads that were pointing down didn't get caught on those surfaces. So all that's left now is to get two more nuts to go on the bottom here for these other bolts and then I'll be in good shape. And I want to mention taking it off the brackets probably just the smarter easier way to go. I like to start everything I do 
in the more difficult manner and then always end up frustrated and get to this point anyway. So I would just start by taking it off the bracket and then you can mount it on the plate. You can set the plate in there real easy and then you can bring in the compressor separately and set it in there and just put those screws back in. Okay, so it's been a couple days now. I bought some stainless steel hardware and I got that base mounted to my battery plate. And also my switches came in the mail. I've got one for a compressor and one for the front locker and one for the rear locker. And they all have pictures and are labeled, so pretty clear. These are kind of factory style switches. They'll go right where the factory rocker switches go. I have three switches there right now, one for my rock lights and one for rear defrost and rear wiper for a hard top. But I've sold my hard top, so I no longer need those. So I can fit four switches, these three, plus my rock lights, and then it'll perfectly fill up those four spots for the switches. And I don't have to add any aftermarket switches yet. Kind of trying to keep the stock look and not add a bunch of extra stuff on there yet. As I say stock look, look at this thing. I've thrown all kinds of aftermarket junk all over it. So after doing the same thing repeatedly and beating my head against the wall, I finally found where I think it'll work as a perfect little mount. You can see two of my new stainless steel screws and then two old black ones that came with it. So now I think I'm gonna go ahead and mount the tray in there real quick and then I can put the compressor back on there and these four bolts go through the sides to mount the compressor. Got the compressor nice and mounted in here now. Um, you got good access to the quick connect. I can still kind of rotate this silver piston back and forth. So once I get the solenoids in the mail, which they haven't come yet, I can angle this. I think that'll that orientation will work pretty good. So the next step is going to be wiring it, which you have this big wiring harness I have draped over this step ladder. And then it also came with this little kind of harness. It clips right into that other bigger harness. And this is where you'd connect all your switches. It also came with this little relay. It did come with a compressor switch, which I'm not going to use. I have one that actually mounts on the Jeep that looks like the factory switch and then a few little electrical connectors here. So I haven't really looked at the wiring harness on this side to see what really goes where, but this side is your battery side. You've got the red for the positive, and then you've got two black wires, and those both go to the negative. And then you come up, and that, that gives you the length of wire to run. And then you've got a fuse, and then a little more room. And I'm pretty sure one of these plugs into that clip on the compressor, which I'll figure out here in a minute as I'm wiring it up. Okay guys, so I'm going to stick you on a hyperlapse while I wire it up, and if there's anything technical, I'll go over it afterwards. I'll show you in detail kind of what I did, so you get an understanding of how to hook yours up. ARB does send you the instructions with the compressor, and it's got this wiring diagram, so that's pretty helpful. Okay, so this was fairly simple so far. This is the positive wire. I just tied it into my battery terminal. And these are the two negative wires. I tied them in right here. I know this is kind of messy. At some point in the future, I plan on cleaning that up, but not today, guys. I kind of ran the wires along with the existing wiring harness on that back channel there. And then I'm gonna zip tie them down to keep everything nice and clean and keep it from falling anywhere it shouldn't. Then on the compressor side, you've got your pressure switch here and it has you connect this red and this blue wire to the pressure switch. I'm not sure if either side matters. It didn't actually say in the instructions, so I, I don't think it does. I'll find out shortly. And then on this big cluster with this red, white, red, black, and blue wire, that's where you plug in this relay. And then with these clips, you take the black with the white stripe and the red with the white stripe, that clip, plugs into the red and black coming out of the compressor. These two clips are what will actually connect to the two solenoids that control the lockers later on. Again, I just don't have those yet. And then you'll just have this one long length of wire left, and this is what will feed through the firewall. And it doesn't have the clip on there yet. It did come with this clip that you will feed these wires in so they can be connected correctly. It's left off, so you can kind of feed it through right now. 
So if you guys didn't know, this little rubber grommet where this big wiring harness goes through is a pass-through through your firewall into the cab. I have previously run wires through there before. Uh, one time I actually managed to get a line through the opening of the grommet so I didn't have to cut a hole. But then since then it got way too tight in here. So I just cut a small hole at the top here and I fed a wire through. So now I'm feeding through that extra bit of wiring for this and I'm gonna pull it through and then I'll probably call it for the night and leave it wrapped up in a spiral in my cab. So now that these wires are pulled through, I can put this clip on the end, which is pretty much just sliding these little guys into place in there and they've got these little tabs on there that'll lock them in. So after you do that, they plug into this little harness here. So the quickest and easiest way to know where these wires go in the clip is just to look at the ones they mate with. You'd want them to be the same color. So it looks like the green would be the top right. So that one's locked in now. Yellow would be the top left. Clipped in. Then red would be the bottom left. And black would be the bottom right. All right, so yellow, green, red, black. It's kind of a mirror image there. That way they will connect. So now you're connected and these go to your switches. So maybe real quick, I can try and hook up the one for the power and just see if it works. So I broke down, I had here at run tonight. Uh, I hooked the switch up as it says to on there. They're kind of numbered back here. It'll be a little more confusing, I think, when I switch to my other switch because it doesn't have these clips or the numbers. So I'll kind of have to figure out the wiring again on that. But it, it took me a minute because I was thinking I was getting power from the battery. But after it goes into the compressor, that the battery is powering the compressor. The switches have to get power from an accessory. So this uh, red and yellow wire needs 12 volt power from inside. It'd be connected to the ignition inside. Uh, I have an amplifier on the back of my Jeep. So I just kind of stuck it on there. Oh, let me stick it on there real quick. All right, I'm touching it. So there you go, she works. Okay guys, so I've got my dash pulled apart. I've got the switch panel pulled out. I went ahead and pulled out the blank and the two switches that were in there. Uh, this was for my rear wiper and defrost on my hard top, but I think I said it earlier in the video, I sold that, so I no longer need these. And then on Amazon, I bought these new switches. One is for the compressor, one is front diff lock, and one is rear diff lock. Now, uh, it kind of sucked because I couldn't find a compressor one on its own, so I had to buy a, a double pack, so it was a compressor and one that said diff lock, so I paid like a little extra to get those two just so I could have the compressor one, but I wanted ones that said front and rear diff locks, so I bought these two separate. I forget the price, but for all four of the switches, I think it was under 80 bucks. So now how I think I'm going to set it up is I've already moved my rock light over to the very right. So it's on the you know, farthest side from me. I think I'm going to put the compressor first, then I think front, then rear. I don't know why. Uh, in my head, it just makes sense. First, I'd use the compressor and then front of the vehicle to the back. I, I mean, that's not logical. I think most people use the rear locker more. Maybe I'll go rear than front. I don't know. I don't know. But also, if I put the front over here, then it's closer to the rock light button, which I'll probably maybe be more likely to use off the trail, and I don't want to accidentally hit that, but it shouldn't matter if I don't have the compressor on. I don't know. I'm kind of thinking this through in my head right now, but out loud to you guys. So, yeah, I'm definitely putting the compressor first. I'll probably go front and rear. I don't know. And like I said, in my head, that's just what I think instantly. So it'd probably be best to just follow what I'm thinking because that'll work out for me. 
These switches are pretty easy to put in. There's like a tiny little ledge on the top and the bottom, so it just kind of clips in there. All right, that one's in, and it has a very sharp piece of plastic sticking on the back. That felt good. Uh, so then front diff lock. Okay. And now the rear diff lock. Cool. So there's all three of the switches. And they do have a little indicator light. I don't know if it's picking it up too good in the daylight, but those lights do come on when the switch is on. The only thing they don't have, like the old lights had, is here's the old light. It had that little indicator, but it also had a tiny light on the bottom here, which illuminated the picture. These don't have the picture illumination. So not to talk you to death about wiring, and I'm, I'm far from any form of electrician, Wiring diagrams are less something I understand and more of a puzzle I can follow and kind of figure out. But from what I understand so far with not having totally wired everything up yet is that once you connect your little switch wiring harness, which is kind of separate from the main harness, that you have switch two, switch one, and then you have what they call their isolation switch, which I'm calling the power switch to the compressor. Right before all of these switch wires, you have these two wires that come off the harness. This blue one is to illuminate like your dash lights, your dummy lights for your differentials to be locked. I don't even know if I can hook that up and I'm not gonna try. So I'm totally ignoring the blue wire and then I'm ignoring the blue wires up here as well on each switch. So those are, those are nothing to me. The red and yellow wire on the other hand is what will get 12 volt power. So you will connect this to constant 12 volt power or auxiliary, so once you turn on the Jeep, it gets 12 volt power, like an ignition switch. And then this wire, once it gets power, it feeds your power wires in each one of the switches, the switch one, switch two, and the isolation switch. So that way you don't have to run power to three individual switches, they've got it spliced in here for you. So then, again, from my understanding, how they have it wired and what it says in here is that switch one has to be activated before you can turn on switch two. So the reason they've set it up this way is that they want you to use switch one as your rear locker and switch two as your front locker. And with it not being able to activate switch two unless you have switch one activated, if you accidentally hit the front locker, say when you're driving on the highway, it's more likely to cause a wreck than if you accidentally engage the rear locker because that affects your steering heavily. So the way they see it is you would have to accidentally hit the rear, then accidentally hit the, f the front locker for it to cause an issue. I mean, you can still have issues if you accidentally engage your rear locker, not on a trail when you're not meaning to, but it's safer than the other one. So they've got it set up as kind of a extra safety to keep you from doing that. So how that's kind of configured is basically once you flip this switch, it powers this yellow wire, which then in here, powers this yellow wire and then that gives you your initial power to then flip the switch which then powers the green wire which goes to your solenoid and will engage your locker it's it's probably really confusing to hear it's really confusing to kind of first read i slowly got a grasp on it i basically i was just following the wires around and seeing how everything was it would have been cool if they could have labeled it like power or negative they just labeled it the colors and then i had to just follow the diagram all the way back to the battery or to the solenoids but i don't know it's actually fairly simple the big thing i was trying to figure out was since these are made to go to arb switches which have all these different plugs on the back and you know they're quick connects my switches are just these three little wires so i was trying to figure out what i needed to do and basically black to black red will be red on this one and then red will be yellow on this one and then my white on this one would be green and my white on this one would be the yellow i hope that wasn't too confusing uh, obviously i'm going to go over it as i'm installing it that was just kind of my quick rundown to try and explain it to you guys so basically you don't have to just sit here and stare at a picture like i did for 10 15 20 just you know it only took me a minute to figure it out 
but I'm trying to save you guys that minute. So now my first order of business is deciding what 12 volt power I'm gonna connect this to. I do have my rock light switch in here and I've got power to that so I could splice into it or I could run a new line or I could splice into something else. There's plenty of wires, uh, I haven't decided. So the new plan is to use what they call a fuse tap, which basically sticks in where a fuse goes. You put that fuse in there and it acts as that fuse, but also supplies power to a second fused wire that you can add onto something else. These are super helpful and I actually didn't know about them until about two years ago when I installed my halo headlights up front. I used a fuse tap to pull power to make my halos daytime running lights. So if you didn't know, your fuse box is behind the glove compartment. You just take the glove compartment out and it is stuffed right back in there. I think I'm going to try and use uh, the rear wiper number six fuse. It's a 20 amp fuse. So I think I'm gonna pull that and plug this in and then run a wire over to the uh, switch. So here's the fuse tap installed and I ran the wire up through there kind of the same way some of the radio wires come through and I've crimped it down. So now we should have good power. So I'm gonna test it again and it should work this time. And if it doesn't, please don't laugh at me. I think I have the compressor switch hooked up right. So let me show you what I got there real quick. So if you're using the same, just three wire rocker switch as I am, this is how you would want to wire up your compressor. So the red wire goes to the red and yellow wire from the harness. The black wire goes to both the black wires from the harness. So you splice two into one. And then the white wire from the switch goes into the red wire from the harness. And unless you have dash lights you want to hook up, the blue wire with the white stripe gets ignored. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> I've got it all wired up and figured out. So real quick, I'll show you that it's working and then I'll kind of talk about the wiring. Okay, so my first switch is the compressor. So the compressor has to be on for either of the lockers to work. So that's your first kind of safety. So that's on. And like I said earlier, switch one has to be on for you to be able to activate switch two. So how ARB suggests in the instructions that you make switch one the rear diff and then switch to the front diff. That way, if there is an accidental uh, turn on of one of the lockers, it's the rear, which is less likely to you know, be a big issue for you because it won't affect your steering as much. So uh, front diff will not work because it's switched to, and then the rear diff will work. And then now with the rear on, I can turn on the front. So this does have the negative, I guess if you want to see it this way as a negative, that you cannot just turn on your front locker if you're rock crawling. So later on, if I ever find that to be an issue, I will just wire another 12 volt line straight up to the front and then that will kind of disable you needing this one. But you see, if you turn that off, that one goes off. And then they're all on, you turn the compressor off, they both go off. So yeah, that's working. So now to talk about the wiring. So this one is what ARB's wiring calls switch one. So how I have it wired is again, both the blacks from the harness to the black for the switch. I have the red from the harness to the red from the switch. And then the yellow from the harness goes to the white from the switch. So that's pretty much like the first one. So when you go to what they call switch two, which I have wired up to my second switch here, my front locker, it is a little different. So here's switch two, and if you'll see, switch two doesn't have a red wire coming from the harness. So the yellow wire from the harness goes to the red wire from the switch. Then you've got both the blacks go to the black on the switch again. So both blacks from the harness go to the black on the switch. And then the 
green wire from the harness goes to the white wire from the switch. So now I'm kind of gonna stuff everything back in there and put it all away. So all the switches and wiring's all done. The only real wiring thing I have left to worry about is right here is all this extra wire. I'm gonna zip tie it up and tuck it away up in there somewhere and make sure it doesn't get in the way of my pedals or anything. So safety first. Uh, it's pretty late. It's already nine o'clock and it's dark out. So I'm gonna finish this tomorrow. But tomorrow, all I have to do, I think, to finish this is install the solenoids on the compressors, plug them into the switches, and then I have air lines here. I got steel, stainless steel braided air lines to go to the lockers, so hopefully they're a little more rugged, less prone to getting old, cracking, or breaking when they touch anything. So, yeah, should be pretty good. So now it's time to start installing these solenoids. Uh, the solenoids are what actuate when you flip the switch inside. It sends a signal to the uh, solenoid here and it opens or closes to either engage or disengage the locker. So the first thing we have to do to install these is to remove these plugs. So the next thing I'm gonna do is remove this fitting. It was in the solenoid when I ordered it. And I'm gonna remove this, put Teflon tape on it, and then tighten it down into one of those holes. And then I'm also gonna Teflon tape the top of it and then put it back on the solenoid. And then it's where it should be. It says to have that port one, which both of these are port one. One's a plug, one has the fitting. So I guess you can use either one, whichever way fits in your application better. And then you have port two over here, and that's where your airline's gonna hook up. So those uh, braided steel airlines I ordered, each airline came with two of these fittings. One would be four down at the differential on the axle, and that would be where the airline hooks up, but I have a bulkhead fitting on there already. And then the other one is meant for right here in uh, port number two. It screws in like this. This more pointed side is what you wanna use for the airline. So again, I will Teflon tape that and install it there. On second thought, maybe I won't remove this first. It looks like they've put some kind of sealer on there already, and I stuck a wrench on it, and it's pretty tight in there, so maybe it's already pre-sealed, so maybe I'll just Teflon the bottom, screw it on there, and then when I'm done, I'll check and make sure nothing leaks. The instructions did say you do not need to crank on these very tight, so just give them a little bit, but don't go crazy. So this is probably gonna be the harder one to get on because it's got this in the way. Uh, I mean, again, I could have removed it and done this before, but I didn't have the parts and it's installed now. And I don't wanna mess with it, but I found I have just enough room to keep turning the cylinder this way and back to get the turn up here, then go down, then bring it back up and keep repeating this very slow process, but it'll work. So I'm not gonna make you watch me keep doing this, but that's that's how I'm getting it in. Okay, this one should be a little easier. I got more room over here. Okay, I think that's good enough. Uh, it's pretty ugly. I don't know, I might try and get a little bit more of a turn out of this one or something. Uh, that one's facing pretty good. I want it to go right down that way. And this one, honestly, I'll probably run to the rear and I'll bring it around here. Now all we need to do is plug these two connectors from the wiring harness into these two connectors from the solenoids. If you remember correctly from when we were hooking up the switches, the dark green wire goes to switch two, which switch one has to be activated for switch two to be activated. So I made switch two my front locker. So it doesn't really matter which one of these I hook it to. I just need to know that this is my front locker. So when I run the airline off the solenoid, that airline goes to my front locker. Since this one is facing the front easiest, I'm gonna make that my front locker. And now since this one's kind of facing the rear, that's gonna be my rear locker.
Okay, so I think this is how I want it. Uh, I don't know, it looks like everything's got plenty of room. So I'm going to go ahead and re-tighten down this little nut here, and that's what keeps the cylinder from being able to rotate. So it's gonna fix it in place. Okay, I think that's nice and snug there. It's gonna be a little noisy for you guys, but I'm gonna do a quick test. I'm gonna walk in there, flip on the compressor. It'll start up for a second and then build up pressure and turn off. And then I'm gonna flip the uh, rear switch first. And then I'm gonna flip the uh, front locker switch. And when I do H1, you should hear some air kind of out of those. So let's see if it works. worked like a charm. I even made sure that this one was set up to my rear switch and it is and this is set up to the front and this one doesn't work unless this one's on and neither of them work unless the air compressor's on so that's really cool. And then obviously I got the quick connect here for when I want to air up my tires or you know use air for anything else. I just plug into this and I've got an air compressor right here under my hood. So my next step is to start installing the actual air lines and as you can see here I got what I think is a six foot and then a 12 foot for the rear stainless steel braided airline. So I just got a little Teflon tape on the end of this one. Really wish I would have thought to do that before. It was kind of a pain to get it on. So now I'm just gonna hook the airline up to it, tighten it up, and then just kind of drop it through there. And I'll roll under the Jeep here in a minute and kind of figure out how I'm going to run it and where I'm gonna put some zip ties to hold it up out of the way. And now I'll just slap some Teflon tape on this one and do the same thing with the longer airline and I'll wrap it around back here and drop it through and it'll probably follow the frame back. I zip tied the airlines up out of the way and kind of routed them where I needed them to go. I then checked everything. Uh, the lockers were working, but I had some leaks and it was kind of squirting out a little bit of diff fluid on the fitting, so I had to kind of clean that out. And then I had to redo all the fittings that were leaking. And now I think they're good. I tested the front and rear. I can't hear any leaks. I know the front locks because I have it jacked up, so I checked it. The rear, I still have to jack up and check it, but I'm pretty sure it locks too. The lockers that are in both these axles are like a year, year and a half old and they were lightly used, so I, I think they're fine. So let me just go ahead and show you kind of what I did. So here is the airline going to my front locker. I kind of loosely zip tied it here to the control arm and like I said, it's loosely zip tied so it can actually pull in and out a little bit if it needs to. Like if I'm flexing and I don't have enough slack, it can pull out a little extra slack. Up here, uh, this is one of the newer style ARB bulkhead fittings where it kind of puts that 90 on it, which I like a lot because before it just kind of came out like this and the airline would stick right out like this from where my fitting was put in. So that's kind of a nice new touch. And then if you kind of follow this line, uh, like I said, I think I had a six foot front one it was much longer than I needed. So I have a bunch of zip tied up there by the locker, just kind of wrapped up. But I kind of hooked it right here to the top of the mount for the upper control arm. And it's still, again, kind of loose. This one's a little tighter, so it's keeping a little more grip on it. But over here, I've got some slack up in there that you can't see behind the frame. So if it needs to, it can pull it out. And then I have all this slack down here. So I'm under the Jeep now, uh, it's a little dark and I'm gonna have to roll around. So you're gonna get a little bit of the monkey cam of me bouncing around a lot. But this is the rear airline. I brought it down right next to the frame. I had a spare kind of opening here for lines. So I kind of just stuck it in that. It's pretty loose, but it 
the mouth is tighter than what the hose is, so it, it holds it in. It just has play inside there. Then here, I zip tied it to the brake line, again, fairly loosely. I don't want anything too snug, especially not connected to my brake lines. So I ran it above my transfer case skid plate following the frame, and there's another one of these little guys in there that had an opening, so I stuck it in there about halfway down. Okay, it was terrible down here. I had to stop and get a flashlight. Here we are at the back of the transfer case skid. Right there, I loosely zip tied it to those wires ran it above my brake line, ran it up there. I zip tied it to those wires. Again, not that tight. And then I kind of left some slack around up there. And then the actual tightest zip tie I have is right here where I really kind of snugged it up to the uh, parking brake mount. Uh, it's, not any, it's not any other wires or lines. It's a firm metal bracket, so that's where I chose to actually put it nice and snug. And then I just kind of let it droop down here near the exhaust, and this is where it connects to the axle. And then I left a good healthy amount of slack here for a little bit of flexing. And so that's pretty much all I did, and I'll test it out here soon, hopefully, and I think it'll all be fine, but yeah. So let's hop up top and we'll take a look at the actual lockers. Okay, so I've got one tire jacked up, the other's sitting on the ground. So when your locker isn't engaged, you can spin this tire and it doesn't try and spin the other tire. So I'm gonna kick on the compressor and kick on the front locker and then I'll show you the difference. So now the front locker's engaged. There, it just locked in so I can no longer move this tire because it's trying to also spin the one that's on the ground. That's how you know it's locked. If I had both tires jacked up, I could still spin this, but it would also be spinning the other side at the same time. So, I mean, that's a job well done, guys. I'm pretty happy about that. The switches look good, the compressor's nice, the lockers work, I've got no more air leaks. It took me, I think, about a week or so on and off, but it's all done. Okay guys, I think that wraps up the switch, compressor, and airline install for this video. So I appreciate you sticking around if you made it this far. Think about subscribing if you're not, and I'll see you on the next one.